Welcome to uh, FLAPS 2020, the, the third day of the, the conference and tutorial. Um, today, uh, I, will, uh, I will share this, uh, this session and it's, uh, it's a great pleasure uh, and honor for me to introduce our uh, keynote speaker, uh, uh, Professor Joseph Wang. Um, Joseph Wang is Distinguished Professor and SAIC Endowed Chair in the Department of Nanoengineering at University of California, San Diego. Um, he's also the director of the uh, UCSD Center for Wearable Sensors and the founding editor of Electronalysis. Um, uh, previously, he, was, uh, he served as chair of the Department of Nanoengineering between 2014 and 2019 and as the director of uh, uh, Center for Bioelectronics at Arizona State University between 2004 and 2008. Um, he made a um, pioneering contribution to wearable biosensors, uh, electrochemical devices, flexible printable electronics, nanobiotechnology and nanomachines. And uh, he's, uh, he has a track record of uh, counting more than, more than uh, 1,070 papers, 11 books and uh, uh, 30 patents. He has a, a, an etch index of 160 and uh, um, uh, his work is cited in approximately over uh, uh, 107,000 times. Um, um, and uh, today, uh, Professor Wang will uh, um, deliver a talk uh, entitled Flexible uh, Printable Bioelectronic Devices. Um, Joseph, the floor is yours. And uh, um, I will ask the attendees to, um, uh, to register questions in the, using the Q&A. Uh, um, button in the in the in Zoom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luigi, and thank you, Ravi, for the kind invitation. It's early morning in San Diego. This is our beautiful campus. We are down in the south part of California, and this is our uh, UC University of California tattoo. So this is the outline for my talk. We will start with the material requirement for printable, flexible bioelectronic devices moving on to bioelectronic sensor and then to on-body energy harvesting. So we are in the digital age, a digital revolution, and all the gadgets, all the devices, and now we have ability to incorporate many sensors. We already have sensors for ECG, for mobility, steps, calorie. But what is missing is the monitoring of chemical biomarkers. So we want to add ability to track uh, chemical like glucose, uh, cortisol, anytime, any place. So this is what you have at the moment, commercial device. You can monitor ECG on your Apple Watch, uh, your uh, steps, uh, temperature. And what is missing is the chemistry, the biochemistry, where you can get more comprehensive information about your physiology, stress level, performance, electrolyte, hydration, and much more. So this is what we would like to add. This is a big opportunity, but it's also a big challenge. Getting this requires uh, addressing challenges of stability of receptor, biofouling. That's why we don't have it in the market. And this, I reviewed this in my uh, last year, uh, Nature Biotech Review. Uh, covering the development of wearable biosensor from the 60s of the early glucose all the way to uh, 2020. Oops, jumping just a moment. So what are the opportunities? What are the advantages? Uh, uh, such device give you real-time monitoring, chemical monitoring at any time and location. This will be done non-invasively. You don't need to have a finger stick blood and it will uh, change the way that uh, wellness, nutrition, and health are monitored uh, because you eliminate the need for uh, finger steep. You get real-time monitoring. You can go to telemedicine, which is important now with the pandemic, instead of in-person. So you can do remote medicine, all with this advantage of real-time non-invasive chemical uh, monitoring. But there are challenges, challenges due to stability, biofouling, if you do measurement in saliva, for example. Also, the conditions are not, control not controllable, unlike the lab. You have changes of temperature, 
changes of pH of the sweat, outdoor, and so on. You need to validate them many times compared to blood uh, gold standard. So we don't have yet the accuracy that you have in a centralized lab when you have all the bench and uh, this. So when you do measurement on the sweat, on the skin or in the mass, you have limitation of accuracy, safety issue if you put it in the mouse or on the eye. The scope is limited. Many of our assay, like immuno assay, are not uh, easy because they are involved a lot of washing step, a very complex step, which are not compatible with on-body operation. Then the issue of the material, the curvature of the skin, the movement of the body, as well as uh, data security, data safety, and the energy management. So these are the challenges that we will try to address. So in the case of bioelectronic devices, we are uh, moving away from the control laboratory where we use enzyme in clinical analyzer to the field, wearable operation, again, changes in pH of temperature using different biofluids, not only blood, uh, with different pH, different uh, proteins, so again, saliva, tears, sweat. And the, the behavior of the enzyme that we use in biosensor, biofuel cell is strongly influenced by the temperature, by the pH, and all these other conditions. So we're moving from the control lab condition to uncontrolled a field operation where this condition can strongly influence and compromise our performance. So if you visit my lab, you will welcome by this mannequin with many, many sensors on different waveform, uh, different form factor, different accessory on the skin, on textile, on glasses, on ring, uh, which uh, can be very comfortably uh, worn by the body and give you wireless information. Again, sensor from the bottom or the socks and on textile all the way to the top, in the mouse and the wrist and so on. So these are mostly electrochemical sensors based on a printable electronic. So we like uh, screen printing uh, for over two decades. We've been using uh, it for glucose strip in the 90s. And now we are printing on textile. We're printing our tattoo sensor and uh, so on. So, these are screen printed sick film technologies. So a lot on a textile and a lot on a tattoo base. And uh, we need to make this uh, rigid uh, printer, uh, printed electrode into flexible and stretchable uh, devices. So this is uh, the challenge. We need to meet the gap. Electrochemistry usually is very rigid, very planar, this battery or rotating disc electrode or glass pad. These are all very rigid. Our body is very soft. This is from San Diego Zoo. You see the flamingo. They're all very stretchable. So we need to make, uh, to bridge the gap between the rigidity of electrochemistry as well as with the curvature and the softness of uh, biology. So this is our initial challenge. Uh, we, we started this journey over uh, 15 years ago when I was in Arizona State. We started to work on flexible sensor. We went with Motorola and uh, we have flexible display. This was a paper in 2008. We have uh, putting it in the eye, in the puncture plug, so the tear can flow. This is electrochemical flow cell with immobilized glucose oxidase that the tear can flow through, and so this was 2008, 2009, we started to do uh, flexing and bending of electrochemical device. So this early paper, we see the impact of mechanical bending upon the electrochemical performance. And, again, and these are all screen printed, again, large scale mass production, like to our textile, uh, so you, we transfer it to our uh, textile. This is a pattern of eight sensor array. And uh, the challenge again to make the ink uh, stress enduring and uh, surviving, uh, surviving stretchability. So this early work from 2010, we printed the microelectrode array. You see 800 micrometer electrode uh, on uh, PET or other uh, 
flexible substrate is another array. So we are moving away from rigid uh, planar substrate to flexible soft substrate and also try to modify the ink to endure the stress. As you can see, we would like to achieve device that can bend, can fold, can stretch, can twist, even self-repair. So the goal is we want to push our screen printer device to the limit of stretchability, four, five, six hundred percent. And even if they have a crack like this and damage, we can still have a self-repair capability. See, we try to push our devices to the limit of stretchability, self-healing, by using a novel ink material that can endure the stress. So early work in 2012, uh, we developed this tattoo biosensor, a nice uh, flower-shaped tattoo. We go to the beach in uh, San Diego, we buy this tattoo paper, and we can print these beautiful flower electrochemical cells. These are the three electrode working reference and counter. We decorate like a flower. But we try to have the elasticity of the tattoo paper with attracting electrochemical performance of the, the ink, modified ink that can withstand repeated uh, strengths. So this is the way we print on the tattoo. We peel the cover protective layer. We transfer it to the skin in a matter of uh, 20 second, you'll see the process in the video, and uh, you have the electrochemical uh, uh, sensor, biosensor on the skin. So uh, we are not only controlling the ink, we're also controlling the structure. We use a, a serpentine structure, can give you also another dimension of stretchability, not only based on the material, but also based on the structure. So these are two dimension of stretchability based on the ink and the structure. And this allow us to go to extreme stretchability. Again, four, five, six hundred percent of uh, uh, stretchability. So early work again, six years ago, we work on a P that PSS uh, stretchable ink, which are modified with a uh, elastomer with Ecoflex or polyurethane also adding the surfactant zonil for wettability. So we take our ink with the conductor nanotube, then add a binder, which is elastic, like a polyurethane or, elas uh, or um, Ecoflex. We add a surfactant, and this gives us extreme stretchability. You can push it now, again, combined with the stencil, which have the serpentine uh, structure. We can now push it to the limit, as you'll see in the next uh, slide, then the video will show you, uh, let's see. So you can see we can push and push and push to the uh, three, four hundred percent. We can uh, twist it. We can you see while we're stretching, four, five, six hundred percent, keeping conductivity, we can pinch it, all the extreme mechanical uh, strength. So as I mentioned, we combine two, two levels of stretchability. One is based on the uh, material, the ink, which is again have the elastomer and the surfactant. But the first dimension is uh, the structure, the serpentine. So initially when we stretch, we stretch the structure until it's linear. This is about 200%. Once it's uh, straight, now the material plays a role and we can go all the way to five, 600% stretchability from the initial one. So we create this on our stencil, which have a lot of serpentine structure to put our carbon and silver ink. So we have silver contact and the carbon and nanotube uh, modified electrode. And then we, you can see the same on the textile. So this is like part of a biofuel cell. We embed it in the socks. Again, we can twist it. We can stretch it in multi XL dimension, keeping the conductivity, keeping the performance. You see the working electrode, if it's reference electrode for biosensor. So we have large area for the biofuel cell with extreme uh, mechanical resistance. 
resiliency. And uh, you can see the typical uh, uh, cyclic voltammogram during this uh, stretching, even 500%, you can see the peak is not changing because we are talking about composite electrodes. So the actual surface area is remaining the same, even under corresponding glucose biosensor with 300% stretchability, both the calibration and the repeated stretching of 300%, very attractive uh, performance. Uh, we use it for environmental and security monitoring. We place sensor on a balloon with the flexible electronics. So again, we are inflating the balloon. And when you inflate the balloon, you have a lot of uh, stretching. You're starting with the initial one and you see different degree of inflation of the balloon. And you can see in the next uh, video uh, how the balloon is inflated. And during this process, again, the resistance is not a uh, change. You can see here, different level of inflation of the balloon, very small changes of the resistance, even at level four, five, is our inflation, deflation of the balloon repeated again, and also the cyclic voltammogram, a different level shown here. And again, repeated inflating, deflating, you see there is no apparent change. Another direction that we are exploring is the combination of screen printing with a scene film lithography to create island bridge uh, devices. Like John Roger mentioned, some of these photolithographic island bridge. Here we combine screen printing of the island to get functional device because the photolithography is limited to a copper or gold. We would like to have functional uh, biofuel cell, supercapacitor sensor, so we need islands which are more reactive, as you can see here. So we have an island bridge with a copper uh, bridges, a serpentine, and then the island of nanotube or different uh, carbon, as you can see it on the skin. So we can uh, impart new functionality to island bridge by having islands which are very reactive. Well, the bridges are made by photolithography. But we also make all printed island bridge. So now instead of uh, photolithographic bridges, we also printing the bridge. These are silver bridges here, either on a finger or on a textile. And now we screen print both the bridges and they are nicely uh, stretchable serpentine, as you can see here on a textile, and then different reactive island. In this case, it's Bucky paper, for example. Uh, so this is the Bucky Paper Island Bridge a Biofuel Cell, where you can see the island make of uh, Bucky Paper, which are commonly used in a uh, biofuel cell, the anode and cathode, and the bridges are the uh, silver connector during the, the on-body operation. We also try to um, uh, repair. If you have a damage, we are working on self-healing capability by modifying the ink with different uh, additive like this uh, exyl acetate capsule that whenever you have a crack, they will go into the, into the crack and rapidly restore in 10 seconds, you get back your electrochemical performance. So again, we have this healing capsule based on exyl acetate. As soon as you have a damage, it go and into the damage uh, section, uh, it's being released and restore the conductivity and the performance. Uh, here you can see in real time during cyclic voltammogram, uh, before, during, we make the damage and you see during the CV on the fly, you are repairing the damage and you get it uh, fully restored. Before the damage, during and after, you get back your CV performance. We also use a, a self-healing magnetic particles. We incorporate this part in the audio iron particle into the ink and then they allow even repeated uh, healing. Uh, the previous approach was uh, one single time. Now you can do it multiple time, the damage at the same location and you get uh, basically like two magnet, two permanent magnet that attract to each other. So basically you can see, you can have uh, this magnetic approach, larger crack, even three millimeter and uh, 10 second, 
you get it back or repeated repeated damages at the same location, you get fully restored the conductivity and the performance. So we introduced self-healing capability, eyelid stretchability, and now we can go to our devices. We will start with the sensor and then we go to energy. So again, using this approach, you see the island bridge or other stretchable, we can use it first for sensing application. Uh, chemical biosensing, metabolite, electrolyte, stress marker. So again, this is early work. Eight years ago, we introduced the first uh, lactate uh, biosensor. Lactate sweat is extremely important for uh, assessing your performance and fitness level. So it's based on the enzyme lactate oxidase. And this is a tattoo based on the shape uh, nanoengineering, which uh, you'll see it here. So this is our nanoengineering tattoo with the three electrode, the working electrode with the enzyme. And these are two subjects that uh, once you start to sweat, you see this uh, lactate profile, which is different for the different individual based on their fitness level. Again, the control B is without the enzyme, no response. So it's all that this is highly selective. And again, the, the intensity of the signal and the profile reflect the fitness level of the individual. And you can see how this survived. This is the tattoo nanoengineering, my department, and we mobilized the enzyme on this part, the reference counter electrode. Now we can have severe strain, my department under a lot of stress, you see, but after this 100, the bending and stretching is still have a nice uh, shape of the sensor and good performance. Uh, later on in uh, 2016, we developed the first hybrid sensor that combined chemical sensing with vital signs. So this is a paper where we showed that we can do our glucose or lactate sensor along with ECG on the same patch. You see the heart rate and the lactate and the same electronic, my collaborator Patrick Mercier. So this is an example of a hybrid that uh, fusing the vital sign with a uh, chemical sensing. And again, you can see how it looks, it's very flexible, uh, multi-scalable, and we can see a typical ECG during the exercise when applying the voltage to the electrochemistry, there is no crosstalk, no, uh, no crosstalk between the uh, physical and chemical sensing, again, different uh, subject. So it's fusing the ECG and the biosensing on the same tattoo. Glucose has been the big one uh, for marketing uh, needs. So uh, this is example from 2015. We introduced these tattoos that do reverse iontophoretic extraction of glucose. So this uh, printed sensor uh, do the two function of extracting the ISF, bring it to the surface and then measuring the glucose in a matter of uh, uh, two and a half uh, minutes. So you have your big meal and then like your lunch now and you extract the ISF and then measure the glucose as you see before the meal and after the meal. So this again printed on the tattoo paper, this after transfer and this uh, shape uh, geometry allow you to do both function of the reverse ionophoretic and the biosensing as you'll see in the next video, we peel it from the tattoo paper, the cover layer, and then transfer it to the skin in a matter of uh, 10 seconds. This is slow motion, but it usually takes 10 seconds. And this is for single use, so you don't need to do repeated reverse iontophoretic. It just replaces the finger stick. It's all printed. It's cost less than a nickel, five cent. And it's allow you to do non-invasive replacing finger stick. And we are working also on doing it for repeated applications. So we'll put our flexible electronic on the contact here, as you can see here. So this is again, wireless uh, Bluetooth uh, electronic uh, do re both the reverse iontophoretic and the amperometric detection wireless uh, to the phone or to the laptop. Uh, we also, after we eat, we also try to drink. You'll be drinking a lot tonight in Glasgow, so probably you want to measure your alcohol level. 
So here we have a sweat alcohol sensor where we stimulate the sweat uh, with a, a pillow carpan and then detect the alcohol in the sweat using alcohol oxidase based Prussian blue electrodes. So again, similar electronic, but in this case it's direct iontophoretic, not reverse. Stimulate the sweat in one minute and measure in another minute. So in two, two minutes, it will tell you how drunk you are. You see, if you drink a lot, you see large amperometric response compared to the control without drinking. So these are different validation with the blood alcohol meter. You can see the response is smaller or larger and no drinking, no response, no enzyme, no response. So this is the setup for the alcohol, again, printing on the a tattoo paper. And then we can combine the alcohol and the glucose in what we call the glucol on the same nice uh, panda shaped tattoo. Uh, this uh, device allows you to both measure sweat and ISF, sweat alcohol and glucose in ISF, because when you do the stimulated sweat, you also induce reverse iontophoretic to the other electrode. So basically, it allows you to monitor the, for the first time two different biofluid. One is sweat that they, with the pilocarpine stimulation. At the same time, due to the current flow, the ISF is flowing with the glucose to the other side. So in five minutes, you get both of them and you can measure both your alcohol and glucose. And this is validation with blood glucose meter or blood alcohol meter. And this is a nice uh, panda shape that can be stretchable or twisted on the skin, all with uh, wireless communication. Uh, more recently, we are moving to personalized nutrition. Uh, here is a uh, work with a major uh, nutrition company, DSM, that uh, interest in measuring vitamin uh, D and C. In this case, we use uh, vitamin C on the skin or in saliva where we, after taking the pill, you can uh, see changes in the personalized uh, uh, temporal uh, profile of vitamin C, which relate to the personalized nutrition. You can use it to uh, improve the adherence to the uptake of vitamin and support the nutrition change. So here we immobilize the enzyme ascorbic acid oxidase and looking at the change of oxygen, which is the cofactor and again, we measure it both nicely in sweat, also in saliva. In sweat, again, one minute iontophoretic to stimulate the sweat after taking the pill, and you see the shape of this. So this was a metabolite, uh, and then now let's uh, move to electrolyte, extremely important, uh, sodium, potassium, pH, calcium, Again, work of our group, Perto Valigia V in Weigar, in uh, Berkeley, in Caltech. Uh, so we started with a pH sensor. If you remember, uh, your glass pH electrode is very rigid. It's not compatible. So in 2012, I think we introduced this first pH, smiley pH sensor, based on polyaniline. So these are solid contact ion selective. We don't need the inner solution. We got away from the classical a glass electrode with the inner solution. Now it's solid contact. This one is based on polyaniline, which is uh, sensitive to the a proton. <coughs> and uh, basically the two electrodes are the two eyes. And you can see it uh, the way we print this, four of this uh, smiley pH sensor. The two eyes are the sensor, the ears are the contact. Then we transfer it to the skin. And we do repeated bending. You see the poor uh, smiley is in a abuse, lot of strain, but after, still after all this 50 bending, it's still smiling. After all this severe strain and it's still responding. See this respond before the 50 and after 50 bending, you see it's still uh, nicely responding and uh, smiling like before. The same is for sodium. We introduced this sodium in the biosensor bioelectronic. Uh, you see a lot of stretching and bending. So this is testing of the calibration of the sodium. Every 20 stretching, you see the response is nearly the same in every 20 bending up to 100. And again, no carryover. So it's nice. So 
potentiometric sensor. We're also moving in sweat uh, uh, fluidic. Uh, John mentioned it yesterday. This our case, the first electrochemical one where we have a foam inlet for the sweat gland, the acrid. They will push the sweat over the electrochemical detector. So we use the natural uh, sampling and the pumping of the sweat uh, glands to pump the sweat over the detector and then it leaving removed the, from the outlet. So this is the lab on the cheap PDMS now is uh, uh, connecting to the flexible electronic. You see the sweat is pushing the dye. We remove the electrodes so you can see the dye in 10 seconds. It's filling the reservoir and now the, it will leave from here. So this is the profile. And this is natural uh, pumping of the sweat by the sweat glands. So you have uh, no mixing of old sweat. It's continuous replenish the old sweat uh, with a fresh and new sweat. And again, this is example of uh, having lactate oxidase here, two different subjects. So once you start to sweat, you see the lactate profile for these two individual and pyrometric detection. Then moving to textile. Again, the, in the case of the textile, we have uh, started already 10 years ago with our smart underwear. We print on this elastic waistline of the underwear and more on the different part of the underwear and t-shirt. Uh, this work in, uh, five years ago for sodium and potassium on different uh, textile, again, on the underwear and uh, wristband and watch. So you have sodium and potassium ability. You see we have Ecoflex on top in the ink. We have polyurethane also. Polyurethane replace the PVC normally in uh, iron selective electrode membrane. We use PVC with carbon nanotubes. So you see the stretchability of this and the attractive performance. So again, stretching this. Hello. Yes, yes, please yes. go ahead. Yes. So this is our uh, pH uh, wound sensor. Again, a po based on polyaniline, we put a polyaniline pH sensor and you see repeated stretching and bending uh, of the bandage now. And you can see the re attractive response of the pH wound. Another wound biomarker is uric acid. So here we have uh, the enzyme uricase immobilized on this uh, bandage, this NFC communication to the cloud. So again, this is how we print it. And again, you have mapping of the uric acid in the wound. And this bandage is used for uh, melanoma screening. So we, in the case of melanoma mole, you have the enzyme tyrosinase. So we immobilize the substrate catechol and in the case of melanoma, it will be converted by the tyrosinase in the mold to benzoquinone. So we can measure the benzoquinone by the increased current in the presence of tyrosinase or melanoma. Uh, we are working a lot on a glove for forensic application. So this is again a forensic glove where we, where we use it for a security application, the taking explosive, a gunshot residue, drug, a opioid, and a two finger, one finger to do the sampling and one to do the detection. So basically this is example of a, a glove for detecting a pesticide or nerve agent. So we have the enzyme organophosphorase hydrolase, OPH. And in this case, uh, we uh, again serpentine structure that the, and you put the glove like now in the pandemic we use a lot of glove 
but now we immobilize the enzyme OPH. One finger is for sampling, like this, uh, the pesticide on the tomato or nerve agent. Then you close the two finger, we have ionic liquid, and then you can detect the pesticide of the nerve agent. Uh, so you see this is again highly stretchable, highly bendable, as you can see in this example, multiple stretching of the serpentine structure. Robotic uh, chef uh, for detecting different flavors. So here we have the, again, a five finger to detect different flavor, spiciness or sweetness or sour. So here again, we, we monitor uh, using uh, glucose to monitor sweetness, using capsicum for measuring the spice or ascorbic acid for sourness. Uh, we work a lot with the Navy to detect underwater explosive on the wetsuit of the diver. We do a lot of a multiplex uh, detection or under the skin using micro needle. This is a different talk. Maybe next year we'll talk about lab under the skin of multiple ISF biomarker or lab in the mouth using our mouth guard. But this is a different talk. But to complete this one, we'll. Uh, mentioned the energy application. So all of this need a lot of energy management. So we are working a lot on uh, energy harvesting, energy storage. Uh, this is part of a big DOE project from uh, RPE to develop adaptive system for textile based on thermoelectric, battery, supercapacitor and biofuel cell. So we started the biofuel cell but uh, eight years ago, this is where we published in Angevante 2013 using our UC biofuel cell anode and cathode, where we have the lactate oxidase and the platinum or bilirubin oxidase on the UC uh, biofuel cell. Later on, we make it more stretchable, where we put the elastomer, polyurethane, or Ecoflex. And this acting also is a self powered glucose sensor. You see the power is proportional to the level of the fuel, which is again from five to 30 millimolar of glucose. You see the power is proportional. So you can use it as a cell power sensor and the power is independent on the stretching. You see power is independent on the stretching. We can again uh, print on the socks where plenty of sweat at the bottom. So there are a lot of sweat at the bottom here and we print our biofuels a large area this is more than six centimeters square so you can go to large power of five milliwatt again a lot of twisting and more recently with the sheng shu we developed this uh, island bridge biofuel cell where the island are the pellet pellet of nanotube with lactate oxidase and the bridges are photolithographic, uh, copper. So the islands are not stretchable, but the overall device is highly stretchable. You can see here right, the serpentine bridges are uh, stretched while uh, the power, you see, powering the LED and other electronic device with repeated uh, stretching. So this is a, a give you a power density of 1.3 milliwatt per centimeter square. But overall, you can uh, use the sweat to power uh, LED as shown here in this exercise activity before and after, and it's independent on the stretching. See the power is independent from zero to 100% stretching. You have independent uh, powering. This is under 50% stretching. You have the LEDs being powered under severe uh, stress. A battery, flexible battery, this is zinc, silver oxide battery, we were SIS and bend and twist and stretch, as you can see here. And more recently, we are uh, now uh, combine it with a supercapacitor. So here we have the hybrid the biofuel cell with the supercapacitor on top that we energy harvest from the sweat is stored on the uh, supercapacitor. So here you can see the integration, the bottom.
skin in the biofuel cell on top you see the ALT and the performance uh, under stress you see the this is the super capacitor under maximum uh, bending and stretching and twisting so very negligible loss of the capacitance so in a summary the, we show that uh, innovation in material engineering allow us to develop bioelectronic devices that can uh, twist and bend and stretch even self-repair and even disappear. We work on transient devices like John Roger, but this is all based on bioelectronics or so self-repairing, stretching. And this capability allows us to develop bioelectronic device, biosensor, biofuel cell, other supercapacitor with high performance operating on the skin. So again, this is uh, the Thank you, Nod, for all the agency who make it possible supporting uh, this effort, the government and the industry, my collaborator, Sheng Shu and Patrick Mercer, and most important are the people who made this uh, possible. You see, this is during the pandemic, uh, one month ago, they're still smiling, everyone. So this is part of my NBE team. Uh, we have two, two subgroup, the, the robotic and the wearable. So these are the people in the wearable group, people like uh, Julian is smiling here, Farshad and Azir and Abbas, Yugi and uh, Lou and Eva, they're all uh, smiling uh, despite this difficult time. So again, thank uh, the student, the agency, and thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Joseph. Thanks for the, for the great talk. Um, I, I've collected a few questions. Uh, uh, are you happy to answer those questions now? Sure, with pleasure, with great pleasure. Great. So yes, um, well, th there's some question on the uh, electronics. So one question from uh, Emre uh, from Arb. Um, so the question is, um, you mentioned uh, um, a cost of the sensors around five cents for uh, disposable uh, tattoo-based glucose and alcohol sensors. Uh, how about the electronics in terms of flex PCB attached to the sensor? So can the, can the electronic be disposable as well? And if disposable, what might be the cost of the electronic attached to the, to the five cents tattoo? Um, in terms of uh, scalability also, uh, how do you see the scalability? But the electronic is reusable, like the same model like the glucose street, the glucose meter. Okay, so you don't you don't see the electronic the, the, is uh, reusable, scalable, the same as electronic. We got to supply it in a, again. Our colleague in Taiwan or China they scale the electronic for us at relatively low cost. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, another question is uh, uh, whether you're using uh, what type of uh, uh, data acquisition you're using. If you're using uh, RFID like data acquisition for these two sensors. Um, and uh, if the, the sensor modalities uh, can be uh, um, uh, organized to work also in uh, internal, to monitor internal organs, certainly not as a tattoo. Uh, exactly, so as I mentioned, uh, next year I can tell you about the lab under the skin using our micro needle array, which we have okay. 16 micro needle and this is multiplex detection. It's only go one millimeter, but it's very well correlated to blood. And the beauty here, you can do multiplex and individually addressable micro needle. Again, mm -hmm. the usually, usually Bluetooth communication to a lab. We have wireless communication to the external device. And again, with our center on wearable, we have people work on data security, data safety, but we are very strong in energy and communication people like Patrick Mercer in terms of the electronic do all and Sheng Shu on the material yeah yeah okay thank you um, there is um, there are a couple of uh, questions around the the lifetime of the device um, in terms of uh, the sensor itself the tattoo itself as well as in terms of the enzymes contained in the um, enzymatic uh, uh, sensors uh, how, how long this, this measure can be taken with uh, without uh, degradation of the device. 
Exactly. This is an important point, and it's different from the biofluid. If you do sweat, is not so bad. Saliva will be more severe biofouling. Again, the enzyme, we do all the immobilization with the enzyme stabilizer as needed to stabilize. But usually, these are single day device, uh, usually last for 12 hours when you go exercise. If you want micro needle, we're aiming for three days operation. So it depends, but to be aiming all the challenges of stabilizing the enzyme, protecting against biofouling. So we have a lot of protective layer to exclude the protein as we do antibiofouling protection as while well, stabilizing the enzyme, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's another question in terms of um, uh, related to the glucose uh, sensor where you're using, uh, um, uh, I think it's the ontophoresis, uh, to increase the glucose concentration. I mean, the question is whether uh, uh, this may have an impact in terms of correlation of the glucose concentration in sweat versus the glucose concentration in blood. So, I mean, this one, when we stimulate the, uh, with the glucose, we use reverse ionophoretics. So we are measuring the glucose in the ISF, which mm -hmm. is well correlated to blood. So uh, glucose in sweat is not so well, uh, like John mentioned yesterday, but uh, glucose in ISF. So that's why we use reverse ion to for okay. over 90 seconds to well correlated with blood. Okay. Another uh, question related to uh, glucose sensing. Uh, uh, at some point you mentioned uh, um, monitoring glucose from tears. Um, but uh, the question is, uh, because the, there was in the past some, uh, um, um, some information about uh, um, other works um, trying to commercialize such products, uh, what, what are the actual challenges for uh, commercialization of, uh, um, for instance, contact lenses monitoring glucose? Exactly. Yeah, we didn't do much uh, contact, but in general, I'm well aware. There are nice, elegant work recently, several group in Korea, nice group in Dutch, in Holland, there is a company in Novosen developing a spring that you put under the, tear, under the eye. The correlation is quite good. We developed some glasses that collect the glucose. So there is a good but there's still I mean Google try to Google glasses on the contact. Mm -hmm. develop initially in C. You hear me, Luigi? No question? Yes, there was some... Uh, you some again. Yeah, I think uh, your line is, uh, is breaking up at times. Yeah, unfortunately. I think we lost the connection again. Um, so I suggest that, uh, uh, yes, we will send the questions, uh, the, the, the other questions uh, uh, to, to Joseph and uh, we will post the um, recorded presentation as well as um, uh, additional answers to, to, the, to the questions. I am afraid we need to close the session now. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, participating and uh, for attending the session. And again, uh, apologies for this technical inconvenience. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation. Uh, oh yes, uh, sorry yeah. Joseph. I think your line is uh, is is breaking up. So uh, yeah. is it okay Can that uh, is it okay that we send the question, the remaining questions uh, to you, and uh, so that you can answer uh, them uh, offline? Because I think I suggest I, I believe that your line is not uh, is not stable probably for some reason. Sure. The internet connection is not stable. Yeah. Okay. So
that's fine. Okay, that's thank fine. you all. Think, uh, it, it, thanks very much for your presentation and uh, on behalf of the entire audience, uh, big clap. <laughs> and uh, thank thanks again for your participation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All the best. Bye. Bye-bye.